Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble One, Basic Concepts, Macro and Micro. Number one, what is scarcity? Scarcity is an economic problem resulting from the limited nature of economic resources or the factors of production. The scarce economic resources are land, which include natural resources, labor, capital, which includes tools, machines, and factories, and entrepreneurship. Every society must determine how it will allocate these scarce economic resources. In market economies, markets, through the laws of supply and demand, allocate resources. Central planners allocate resources in command economies. And tribal chiefs and customs allocate resources in traditional economies. Number two, what is an opportunity cost? An opportunity cost is the next best alternative for whatever one is doing at the moment. For example, you chose to listen to this study guide. This is the best activity for you at the moment. If you had something better to do, you would be doing it. Your opportunity cost is the other activity that you are giving up. Buyers and sellers make choices all the time, and these choices come with opportunity costs. For example, choosing to purchase a boat could mean sacrificing the purchase of a new car. Number three, what are the assumptions of the production possibilities curve? The production possibilities model illustrates opportunity costs graphically. In this simplified model, we make the following assumptions. One, only two goods are produced by an economy. Two, resources are fixed. Three, technology is fixed. Four, full employment exists on the curve. Five, productive efficiency, which means producing at lowest cost, occurs on the production possibility curve. Six, cannot produce beyond the curve in the present. Seven, Production inside the curve indicates that there are unemployed resources. Number four, what is the law of increasing opportunity cost? The law of increasing opportunity cost applies to a production possibility curve, or PPC, that is bowed outward from the origin. For an economy to produce more of one good, it must sacrifice increasing quantities of the other good. The PPC on page 6 depicts increasing opportunity costs. Point U inside the curve represents unemployment. Point E on the curve represents full employment and productive efficiency. And point X outside the curve represents a point that is unattainable at the moment. If opportunity costs are constant, then the PPC is a straight line. This means that the economic resources are perfect substitutes in the production of the economy's two goods. Number five, how do you determine absolute advantage and comparative advantage? To determine which country or economy has the absolute advantage in the production of a good, you simply look to see which country can produce more. If no bully can produce 120 yakskin coats and Metacoa can only produce 60 yakskin coats, then no bully has the absolute advantage in yakskin coats. You can also determine absolute advantage by seeing which country can produce one unit faster or one unit with the least amount of economic resources. To determine which country has the comparative advantage in the production of a good, you must determine which country has the lowest relative opportunity cost in producing the good. For example, 
If no bully can produce 120 yakskin coats or 60 glockenspiels, then its opportunity cost of producing one yakskin coat is half a glockenspiel. That is 60 glockenspiels divided by 120 yakskin coats. If Metacoa can produce 60 yakskin coats or 120 glockenspiels, its opportunity cost of one yakskin coat is two glockenspiels, or 120 glockenspiels divided by 60 yakskin coats. No bully has the comparative advantage in yakskin coat production because its opportunity cost of half a glockenspiel is less than Metacoa's opportunity cost of two glockenspiels. The country with the lower relative opportunity cost of production will specialize in the production of that good and then export that good if trade occurs. No bully should specialize in yakskin coats and Metacoa should specialize in glockenspiels. Number six, what is the law of diminishing marginal utility? The law of diminishing marginal utility states that as you consume a product, at some point, your additional happiness from consuming one more unit will fall. For example, you just ate your fourth taco and realized that the third taco gave you more additional satisfaction than the fourth taco. That's because of diminishing marginal utility. Say you just completed your seventh year of marriage and realized that your additional happiness gained in the seventh year is less than the additional happiness gained in the sixth year. That's because of diminishing marginal utility. Your total utility or total happiness increases as you consume more units of a product. However, the rate that your total utility increases will fall at some point. That is diminishing marginal utility. Value lies at the margin. Water will give you more total satisfaction throughout your life than the diamonds that you own. However, the marginal utility of the last diamonds you purchased is much greater than the last glass of water you drank. That idea, along with the concept of scarcity, explains why diamonds are very expensive and water is cheap. Number seven, how does the law of supply and demand work? In a market, Buyers and sellers come together to establish equilibrium prices and quantities of goods and services. The law of supply consists of a direct relationship between price and quantity. And the law of demand consists of an inverse relationship between price and quantity. When the supply and demand curves intersect, a market equilibrium is established. Assuming that no externalities exist, the intersection of supply and demand is allocatively efficient. Number eight, what is the difference between a shortage and a surplus? A shortage occurs in a market when the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied. Assuming no price controls or natural disasters, a shortage is only temporary and market forces will push prices back up toward equilibrium. If the government establishes an effective price ceiling or legal maximum price below the market price, the shortage becomes long term. A surplus occurs within a market when the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. Assuming no government price controls, a surplus is temporary and market forces will push the price back down toward the equilibrium. If the government establishes an effective price floor or legal minimum price above the market price, the surplus becomes long term. Number nine, what causes a shift in the demand and supply curves? A change in any of the following will cause the demand curve to shift to the right, which would cause the market price and quantity to increase, or shift to the left, which would cause the market price and quantity to decrease. 1. Tastes and preferences of consumers. Example, an increase in the popularity of a good will shift demand to the right 
causing the market price to increase and market equilibrium quantity to increase. Two, consumer income. Example, an increase in income will shift the demand for a normal good to the right, but a decrease in income will shift demand for an inferior good to the right. Three, number of buyers. Example, an increase in the number of buyers in the market will shift demand to the right. Four, substitute goods price. Example, an increase in the price of a substitute good will shift the other substitute curve's demand to the right. Five, complementary goods price. Example, a decrease in the price of a complementary good will shift the other complement's demand curve to the right. Six, expectations of future prices. Example, an increase in future price expectations of consumers will shift demand to the right in the present. A change in any of the following will cause the supply curve to shift to the right and cause the market price to decrease and quantity to increase, or shift supply to the left, which would cause the market price to increase and quantity to decrease. One, resource prices. Example, a decrease in the cost of production will shift supply to the right, causing a lower market price and a greater equilibrium quantity. Two, technology and productivity. Example, an increase in labor productivity will shift supply to the right. Three, number of sellers in the market. Example, an increase in the number of sellers will shift supply to the right. Four, subsidies to producers. Example, an increase in per unit subsidies will shift supply to the right. Taxes on production. Example, a decrease in per unit taxes will lower the cost of production and shift supply to the right. Five, expectations of future prices on the parts of producers. Example, a decrease in future price expectations will shift supply to the right in the present. Six, alternative output price changes. Example, a decrease in the price of a good that uses the same resources will shift supply to the right. Remember, when the price increases or decreases for a good, that just leads to point-to-point -point movement along the demand curve or supply curve. Number 10, what happens when supply and demand shift at the same time? When the supply and demand curve shift at the same time, the change in market price or quantity will be indeterminate. That means it can increase, decrease, or stay the same. This is assuming that we do not know how far each curve will shift. When supply and demand both increase or shift to the right, the equilibrium quantity will increase, but market price will be indeterminate. When supply and demand both decrease or shift to the left, the equilibrium quantity will decrease, but market price will be indeterminate. When supply increases and demand decreases, market price will decrease, but equilibrium quantity will be indeterminate. When supply decreases and demand increases, market price will increase, but equilibrium quantity will be indeterminate. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.